Okay, so it's going to be expensive, but how expensive is wildly uncertain. Uh, but there's the technology, which also is what drives the price. Yep. So let's think about getting there. All right. Yep. So I don't think it's easy. Mars is the closest planet. Well, and this is this. Lots of, of science fiction movies. They pop over there for a weekend, right? That's right. Everyone views as Mars as our little holiday trip. So Earth, Mars. Yeah. Of course, it's close. But what is the closest planet that ever comes near the Earth? What is the closest planet that ever comes near the Earth? It's Venus, isn't it? Exactly. Venus actually comes closer to Mars. But these diagrams are, I think, what really misleads people because it looks like it's. Uh, the distance from the Earth to the Mars is less than the distance from you know, New York to Washington. Exactly. Uh, it looks like it just is a skip. Because a real picture would be dot, dot. <laughs> Somewhere dot. down there, yeah, that's right. And poor Jupiter is down the road. Yes. So to scale, let's have a look at a more uh, realistic picture of the whole thing. So you're talking about dots here. We're, so what we're talking about here is this is a snapshot of planets relatively at present. We have the Sun. And we have a few nice probes, our Parker Polar, Parker Solar Probe, that we'll talk about with stars. It's really close. We have some comets, some asteroids. We have a Lucy mission that's going to spend the next five years getting out to Jupiter. But we have Earth. And we have Venus. That's not too far away. Mm, how about Mars? Right over there. Mars is way over there. So and is Mars really that much further away than Venus? This is the problem. They go around the sun. And this is something that we always discount. We have to orbit the sun. We are not stationary. So at some point, now Mars is going slower than the Earth, so at some point the Earth's going to catch up, maybe over here somewhere. That's and right. And will actually be close, at which point Venus might be somewhere further away. That's right. So it may be even further down the solar system. So the difference and the distance between Earth and Mars is not this stationary, we're always close, we're always far away. Now Venus is still at a single point, can be closer than Mars, but sometimes it's further away, sometimes it's closer. And if we look at the difference between Earth and Mars, so what we have is the distance from Mars to Earth in kilometers. Okay. So we have... So these are in the hundreds of millions of kilometers. That's right. So we have 50 million kilometers up here, and we have 450 million kilometers up there. That's a pretty big difference, Paul. So it's actually like nine times further away here than it is down there. Yeah. Th this is the huge difference is we think that, all right, Mars is always there, sure. You know, we're going to go on our lovely Mars exploration for the weekend. Even at the short time, even at the short distance, way down here, still about six months. So that's the quick time that it can take for us to get to Mars. And we're not going to go straight out. I mean, not going to wait to the coast and then go straight from one to the other because that would be fighting too much against the sun's gravity. Exactly. So in order to counteract that, we kind of have to time or match our orbits. So here's our probe being launched from the Earth. That's right. Sun, Earth, Mars. And this is the orbit that has the smallest change in velocity, because that's the real measure of what you need to go from one place to another. It's the delta V, if you like. That's right, the and delta it's, V. So it's an it's a ellipse that goes from the Earth's orbit to the Mars's orbit and just touches the two. So in fact, where you reach Mars is the opposite side of the Sun from where you set out. Exactly. And by next time, Earth is starting to get around to so you right now at these, one of these really big different distances. So just because you leave at a short distance, the planets still keep going. And you get there. And you don't leave a short distance, you actually leave when it's half the way around, and then you slowly catch up. So just before you land is when they're closest, I guess. Exactly, that's right. So you kind of time it so that the middle part of the six month window is when it's close. So you're spending as least amount on that delta V, that energy, because that energy has to come from somewhere, Paul. That's the rocket fuel. That's right. And that rocket fuel costs money, and that rocket fuel costs development. So when we start to look at this, then, there actually is not this whole idea where we can go at any time. There's what we call launch windows. Now the launch windows are, if we go back, where is the optimal time? So our delta V, or essentially our speed or energy is least, the trip is shortest, and we can do it. So here are two kind of upcoming windows. We have October 2024 and November 2026. Okay, so you may not be able to read this, so I'll read it out to you. So it's departing Earth on the 17th of October 2024. Don't be late. That's right. You can probably slip it a little bit, maybe a day or two either side. And, and NASA has done this, but it's if you're out weeks, in fact, what we saw in one of the last rovers uh, in 2020 when they're launching it, Europe was going to miss their deadline by about a month. And it slipped all the way to 2022. Had to wait till the next window. That's right. Yeah. So this gives a delta V of 3.74 kilometers a second, which is a fair bit of rocket fuel. That's still a well, lot of fuel, a lot of energy. As little as you can get away with. And that brings you onto this purple orbit that takes 336 days. So you're nearly a year traveling through space. That's right. And th this is the quick trip. 
This isn't the average trip, this is the quick trip. Then you arrive here in 18th September 2025. So you've just spent quite a while getting to Mars, but now can you easily get back to Earth? Well, if you go back immediately, it's not in the right position. Exactly. So you actually have to wait nearly a year, 336 days on Mars until Mars is around here. And then on 20th of August 2026, you launch off Mars and start your way back. Now it's, it's less energy to come back. Uh, 1.57 kilometers a second, but you're still gonna need to have enough fuel to make that happen. That's right. And now it's only 240 days to come back. Only 240 <laughs> days. And then back to 17th of April, 2027. So three years after you leave, you've had a year, basically a year there, a year to get there, a year on Mars, a year to come back. And this is, it's a bit like traveling under COVID at the moment. You exactly, fly somewhere, that's right. Spend a few Good weeks in down. quarantine, a few weeks there, a few weeks in quarantine when you come back. And, but, and this is the thing, this is the quick trip. This isn't the, hey, we've just chosen a random time that was our convenient. As you said, you missed this window by a few weeks. You're spending too much Delta V, too much energy. You're never catching up or you're, or you're spending too long in space. This adds the risk. This adds the health effects, as we'll talk about later. So you really have to get the timing right. And if you miss this October 2024 window, you're waiting until 2026. So you now have to repeat the process. You leave November 8th, you spend 304 days arriving in September 2027. Then you wait until another over a year, 368 days, till September 2028 to spend 240 days to come back May 2029. Now you could do it fast if you burn more fuel. That's right. So there are other possible orbits. I mean, I suppose you could try and go straight there, yep. much shorter distance, but you're gonna be burning like 100 times more fuel, which means instead of your already very, very large rocket, it's now 100 times bigger. Exactly. In fact, it's worse than 100 times bigger because if you have 100 times more fuel, you need fuel to carry the fuel, to carry the fuel, to carry the fuel, as you talked about. That's right. So it might end up being 1,000 times bigger, so it might be the entire world's petroleum supply <laughs> for the next decade being burnt on one mission to Mars. And this ends up being the problem is we can't just disentangle, hey, we want to get there quick versus the energy, the costs, and the fuel required. So we view, as, as you said, in science fiction as Mars being the, the casual weekend away, we'll spend a few days, that's it. In reality, you're talking about a dedication of years to get there, spin there, and come back. And if you miss it, you have to wait more years. Now, of course, there's a history behind this. I mean, yeah. this is how long it took to go from England to Australia. It was a multi-year mission in East India Company. Uh, so we knew that certainly 200 years ago, people would routinely That's go right. somewhere that took a year to get there, spend maybe the rest of their lives or certainly years before maybe coming back for another year. I don't know if humans today are as tough as that. I don't know if they're as tough as that. And I don't know if people really appreciate what they're signing up for. Are they really going to go dedicate these three years to get there? Maybe they are. I probably am not going to be one of these people, but maybe there's a few other people here. But there's another problem. Even if we can get there, there is Mars. And there's a lot of other issues still to solve. 